I did say I'd have a few days off after the Europa League final. I gave myself more than a few days off, but like you, or maybe not like you, I was wasted that night, my match reaction, sorry about that, but I was empty after that game against Villarreal. I really was, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what could be said in that reaction because it was so zappingly disappointing, just I felt drained after that game and it ended the season on a bad note. It could have been a successful end to the season because of that, but it wasn't. And now all eyes are on Euro 2021. Hopefully England can do something good there. But next season is a major opportunity still for Manchester United to build on the successes that happened this season. Now the success isn't finished second, isn't losing the Europa League final, isn't getting knocked out of the Champions League at the group stage. We want silverware. We want to be competing for the title. But we all know to do that next year, we have to make this summer count and we have to get the right signings in. So this video is going to be my predictions for what I think Manchester United will do in this summer transfer window. Now I've said this quite a few times and I haven't delivered on it, but from next week onwards, and I mean this, content's getting cranked up on this channel. We're getting back into the real deal. Some live content starting regularly. I've done a few of it so far. You've enjoyed it, so I'm going to do more of it. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you all for sticking around. It's been a tough year for everyone, but hopefully this summer can be an exciting summer where United don't have another Jadon Sancho transfer saga and get left empty-handed. Let's see who we can sign. Now, my spidey senses are tingling, and I think that our first signing might actually be Tom Heaton. Not glamorous, but I think with Sergio Romero leaving, Lee Grant, I mean, what's he ever done at United? And Joel Pereira, I think he's going to be leaving as well. It's more of a switch around of third choice goalkeeper. The real question is obviously around Dean Henderson and David De Gea. And I think probably the biggest mistake that Solskjaer made in the whole of last season was not taking off De Gea for Henderson for the penalties. De Gea can't save penalties. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. It's, it's a fact. It's not hard to do, but he didn't. I personally still think that De Gea is going to go this summer. That would be my prediction. I don't know what I think it might end up being. Maybe a season-long loan. Maybe to Madrid. It strikes me as obvious that he would go back to Spain. But who's going to maybe Atletico have just won the league. But they've got Oblak. What would they do there? And obviously Real Madrid have got Keylor Navas. So in, in that sense, they don't need him. But De Gea, I think this summer, will want to go back for his family. It's As I said, I've said it plenty of times before. It just seems right this summer. But let's see what happens there. But a signing I do think United really will make... That's Kieran Trippier. Now, again, like Tom Heaton, is not a, not the most glamorous of signings, and defenders never really are. But Kieran Trippier, for me, on paper, looking at it, would be a very smart signing, a very shrewd signing, and a very reasonably priced signing. And in, that would tick the boxes for all, for all of us, I think, because I think when you're looking at what Alex Tellez did for Luke Shaw, that impact was incredible. And having that competition and maybe a little bit of experience there, for sure, certainly helped him develop into the best left-back in the league. And he's going to get a start in place at Euro 2021 because of it. Now, Aaron Wan-Bissaka's game has certainly come on a lot. But he certainly still needs help going forward and things he can learn. Now, getting an actual right winger and getting a partnership developing on that side is certainly going to help him. But I think getting someone like Kieran Trippier in, someone with experience who can come in and help guide Aaron wan through that, is a much better signing than signing someone like Max Ahrens, who would come in underneath wan -Bissaka. It's the wrong sort of competition for wan -Bissaka. He needs top-down competition from an experienced player rather than bottom-up competition from a youngster who's going to come and steal his spot. No doubt Max Ahrens is great going forward, but for me, Kieran Trippier makes sense. And I'd, I'd almost be surprised if that didn't happen. I think that's one that United are really going to push for. Been plenty of speculation over the last couple of weeks. And for me, for a lot of reasons, it makes sense. Now, probably a position that a lot of you would argue is the most important for United to sign a player in, and that's at centre-back. We've seen, without Harry Maguire, how much we rely on Harry Maguire, but even with Maguire in the team, we still need another centre-back. And the two names that really are coming up and cropping up a lot are Rafael Varane from Real Madrid and Pau Torres as well. Which do I think is the most likely out of those two? Probably because I just don't think... We're Signing players from Real Madrid is always difficult. Now, maybe that changes because Ancelotti's come in, Zidane's left, Varane. The reason that Varane joined Real Madrid instead of United, I think it was from Lons when he joined, was because of Zinedine Zidane. 
So he's now left the club. Maybe that gives a bigger reason that he could leave in the region of 50, 60 million is being banded around. And Pau Torres, the speculation's intensifying and getting stronger that we are going to be signing him. And it's clear that United have their centre-back targets. Which one of those two would you prefer to sign? I think with everything that's going on with Real Madrid, with the ESL that's happened because they are so in debt as a football club and they need to sell players, and the fact that Zinedine Zidane has left, there's more chance than ever to sign Rafael Varane. And if United really make him our priority, go after him and really make him feel that, maybe he'll want to come and want to join. But I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, especially after what happened with Harry Maguire and the Europa League final, and missing him and missing his captain, it's probably going to make him even more... Ex I don't know how to put it, but Solskjaer will be desperate to sign a centre-back this summer because of everything that happened. We, we needed it anyway. And for me, those are the two names that are cropping up the most, Varane and Torres. Which one of those two do you think we'd sign? For me, prediction-wise, i go for Varane over that. And there's one player that you can't not talk about, and that's Jadon Sancho. Now, last summer, last summer was painful. Last summer was just long-winded, drawn out, and ultimately ended in disappointment. Like so many potential marquee signings for United in the last five, six, seven years of the transfer window have gone. You remind me of the Gareth Bales, the Cesc Fabregas, the Sergio Ramos, is plenty of them. And Jaden Sancho last summer was that. They gave us a deadline, they gave us a price, we ignored the deadline, we ignored the price, we didn't get the player. In that sense, it's very, very straightforward. Now, this summer does that change. Because of everything that's happened with the coronavirus, Dortmund are not in as strong a position as they were last summer. With Jadon Sancho as their most valuable asset, that's not the case anymore. And in part because Jadon Sancho is not their most valuable asset anymore. That's Erling Haaland after the season he ha he's had. I'll get into him later. But last year we agreed the terms with Sancho. Sancho wanted to join Manchester United. There were, the most difficult parts of the transfer were already sorted but we just didn't get it over the line because we didn't give Dortmund what they wanted now the fee is apparently in the region now of 80 million there or thereabouts and for me prediction wise I think we're going to get Jaden Sancho this summer might put my neck on the line there by saying that and we might be, ultimately be end, end up being disappointed again but I don't think we'll balls it up two summers in a row and I think that the, the, the terms are more in United's favour this summer than they were last summer I think Dortmund have lost a little bit of the negotiation power that they had with Sancho last summer. And I think if he still wants that move, then I think he'll get that move. Now, I don't think it's going to come down to the Sancho transfer request, which was I was pretty confident that was the only way that we were going to sign him last summer. But he's lost a little bit of value. That will make more sense to United because ultimately we're penny pinchers in that regard. And I just, I just think that we'll get him. We've seen so much that we need a right winger. And so many of you might say, oh, look, but Amad Diallo's here now. Why are you going to buy someone like Jaden Sancho to get in the way of Diallo? Nah, Amad Diallo's 18-19. If we're going to be winning the league next year, which is the ultimate ambition, you can't be purely relying on an 18-19 year old. Simple as that. My opinion. And I think we're going to get Jaden Sancho this summer. And I hope I'm not wrong. And I hope we're not left empty-handed again. But for me, I just I think it will happen. That's, that's my prediction. I'm not basing that really on anything. That's just my gut instinct and what's telling me. Now, I've talked about a goalkeeper, a right back, a centre back and a right winger. And I haven't even mentioned the defensive midfielder. And you know how I feel about a defensive midfielder. But I get a bad feeling about it. And I don't know why. You've got Ruben Neves, who someone that I really admire as a player. I did a, a tweet out. A couple of weeks ago saying, look, he's available 35 million for Ruben Neves. Are you kidding me? And I got pelters from a lot of people saying, you're mad. Why would you want to sign him? I think Ruben Neves could come into this squad and just do such a good job. Such a good job. And that's, But that's my own personal opinion. Obviously, you're all free to disagree with it if you want. Now, Declan Rice, Wilfred and Didi, they're two other Premier League established defensive midfielders who are more traditional defensive midfielders given than Ruben Neves, who's probably got a bit more box-to-box -box about him. Now, Declan Rice is the one that's probably going to be linked with United the most this summer, but you're looking at like 80, 90 million. And I genuinely think that United's net spend this summer is probably going to be in the region of 80 to 100 million. 
there or thereabouts. So I think maybe signing Jaden Sancho is going to make it even difficult to sign even a centre-back, let alone Sancho as centre-back and a defensive midfielder. I think it very much depends on players leaving. Jesse Lingard, 20, 25 million. David De Gea, if you can get him off the books at least and get a loan fee for him and then maybe with the intention of sending him further down the line. I think United signing a lot of players this summer hugely depends on United selling some key players too. And I... I've said it all along that I think defensive midfielders is actually the, the first signing I would make if I was already going to sell shy. And I still hope that's the case. But when it comes to Declan Rice for 80 to 90 million, I just can't, I don't see United seeing the value in that. The old Fergie saying there's no value in the transfer market. Sure, there's plenty of value in spending money. It's going to improve your team that much. And maybe a player like Declan Rice really would, because I know a lot of people like him. I haven't watched enough of Declan Rice to get as excited about him as I would be about Ruben Nevers. And it's not just because he scored a banger against United. He's just a far more dynamic, in my eyes, dynamic and mobile player. Maybe someone like Declan Rice, maybe he's got a better passing range. But you can argue to you want. If you want a pure defensive midfielder, maybe Wilfred and Didi is better than both of them. And I think they've just signed Sumer Leicester. I mean, they're great with their um, recruitment. Give it to them over the last few years. Defensive midfielder always would be my priority, but... I think my gut instinct is telling me that we're not going to sign one this summer. I really, really, for the life of me, hope I'm wrong. But I think if we're going after a right winger in Sancho and we're going after a, a centre-back in Varane or Torres and we're going after a right-back in Kieran Trippier for backup or a competition for Wan-Bissaka, can we really expect to sign a defensive midfielder as well? United over the years have told us that's not the case. I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope things change. Let's see what happens there. I don't think we'll sign a defensive midfielder. I really, really hope we do. But given that Declan Rice might be the best option out of all of them, for a lot of people, that's about the same price as you pay for Jaden Sancho. Which one would you rather have at that price? Let me know. Now, one position I do not think we have any chance in hell of signing anybody in, that's a striker. Harry Kane and Erling Haaland, the two names banded about there. And the two names that, let's be honest, are going to be 120 plus million each outrageous amounts of money. If Harry, Gain, if Harry Kane sorry, goes to Man City, I hate to think what's going to happen in the league next year, given that they walked it, really, without having a striker this year. Erling Haaland, I don't think anyone's going to sign him this summer because of the the fact that he's going to be available for 75000000 million-ish next summer. That's There's going to be a, just a, a huge power grab. Who can give Haaland the biggest wages and the best contract? That's probably where he's going to join next summer. So I don't think Haaland's an option for anyone, really. I don't think Kane is an option for too many clubs. Maybe Chelsea. Would he go Chelsea? don't think Spurs would sell to Chelsea. But in terms of my predictions, I I fully expect United to sign Kieran Trippier. I think that makes sense for United. It makes sense for Wan-Bissaka. And we can, given the success of what happened with Luke Shaw and Alex Tellez, you can understand Solskjaer's desire to replicate that success with Wan-Bissaka and Kieran Trippier. Centre-back. Varane or Torres, Varane is the bigger name, but he's also a brilliant, brilliant centre-back. Still in that France team that's dominated the World Cup, that's probably going to win the Euros too. Top draw player still. So I'd 100% take him, as as anybody would, in a heartbeat. And I, out of the two, I hope it's him. I, again, I haven't watched enough of Paul Torres to really get excited about him, but the fact that we're getting linked with him obviously means that he's done very well. Right wing... I do think we'll sign Jaden Sancho this summer. And maybe because we signed Sancho, we won't get Trippier. We won't get a centre-back. We won't get a defensive midfielder. I don't know. But I've, as I said before, I think that virtually depends on United selling players and getting money in. But for me, Trippier, I'd say that's a guarantee. A centre-back, I'd love to... I, I want Varane. And I hope it's Varane. And I'm probably going to predict... Would I predict us signing Varane? Sod it. I'm going to predict us signing Rafael Varane. How about that? Let's see if I get proven right or not. Probably won't be. Jaden Sancho, I do think we'll sign Jaden Sancho. And it's because of those three there that I don't think we'll sign a defensive midfielder. And that frustrates me massively because I think it's the most crucial position to make a signing in. Said it all along. It's so crucial to the shape of the midfield that we have. We're stacked in every other part of that midfield. Left centre mid, right centre mid, Attacking mids, left attacking mids, right attacking mids. We just don't have the pure defensive midfielder. The DM that sits there does nothing else. We've got Matic, but he's 149 years old. And McTominay is not a defensive midfielder. And Fred would never be a defensive midfielder. So it's for me, it's the most crucial position. But 
my gut's telling me we're going to go to other positions first. Might be wrong. Maybe it won't be. But I do not think we will sign a striker this summer. I think that's going to happen next summer. And I think Cavani staying on a one-year extension means a soldier doesn't have to worry about that position by comparison of how he has to worry about other positions. So that's my prediction for this summer transfer window. In terms of players leaving, I hope, if I'm honest, I hope that De Gea gets to leave for his own sake. And I don't think that you can keep De Gea and Henderson happy and I don't think he kept De Gea and Henderson happy this year, let alone next season. So I think that has to happen for the club in some way, shape or form. Otherwise, Solskjaer is going to have all sorts of problems next year. And as a nice guy manager, that won't bode well for him. But I think Jesse Lingard will leave in the region of 20 to 30 million. I think that'll be good for him. The fact that we're looking at Kieran Trippier probably means Diogo Dalot might be leaving or Brandon Williams doesn't really have a future at the club. There's plenty of players that could be leaving. Maybe I'll do a separate video on the players that should be leaving. If you want me to, make sure you drop a like on the video. This one now, and let me know in the comments. But who do you think United will sign this summer? What positions do you think United will spend their money in? I want to apologise for the last week. I've gone incognito. It was a painful Europa League final, I'll be honest. And I haven't really been at home much. But I'm here now. I'm going to be here properly from Monday next week with live content at 9 30 every morning, Monday to Friday. That is my intention. I've got the internet. It's all working good. So let me know what you think about the summer predictions and my predictions, whether you agree with them in the comments below. Until next time, take it easy.